Good morning and welcome all of St. Michael and all angels and all joining us online today as we celebrate this fourth Sunday of Lent, halfway through our Lenten journey, gathering all of our thoughts together, praising God, let us pray. Bless the Lord who forgives all our sins. And I invite you to bow your head or kneel, as is your custom. If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. We pause now to consider those sins that we have committed through this past week. And together, let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent for the sake of your son, Jesus Christ. Have mercy on us and forgive us that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Gracious Father, whose blessed Son, Jesus Christ, came down from heaven to be the true bread which gives life to the world, Evermore give us this bread, that he may live in us, and we in him, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Joining together, we pray our welcoming prayer. Holy Spirit, living within us, guides our hearts and minds as we welcome today all those who worship with us at St. Michael's. Give us discerning hearts so that everyone who crosses your threshold feels welcomed in the spirit of your love. Help us to recognize each person as an individual sent by you who will enrich our lives. And most of all, O oh God, let this be a place of love and acceptance of all your children. In the name of your child, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. We turn now to our scripture lessons. The book of Numbers is the fourth book of the Bible after Genesis, Deuteronomy, and Leviticus. It has its name because a census was taken and the people were placed in groups preparing for the entrance into Cana, the promised land. But all was not easy for those traveling in the desert, as we now hear. A reading from the book of Numbers. From Mount Hor, they set out by the way of the Red Sea to go around the land of Edom. But the people became impatient on the way. The people spoke against God and against Moses. Why have you brought us up out of Egypt to die in this wilderness? For there is no food and no water, and we detest this miserable food. Then the Lord sent poisonous serpents among the people, and they bit the people so that many Israelites died. The people came to Moses and said, We have sinned by speaking against the Lord and against you. Pray to the Lord to take away the serpents from us. So Moses prayed for the people. And the Lord said to Moses, Make a poisonous serpent and set it on a pole 
and everyone who is bitten shall look at it and live. So Moses made a serpent of bronze and put it on a pole. And whenever a serpent bit someone, that person would look at the serpent of bronze and live. The word of the Lord. Psalm 107, verses 1 through 3 and 17 through 22. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. And his mercy endures forever. Let all those who, whom the Lord has redeemed proclaim. That he redeemed them from the hand of the foe. He gathered them out of the lands. From the east and from the west, from the north and from the south. Some were fools and took to rebellious ways. They were afflicted because of their sins. They abhorred all manner of food. And drew near to death's door. Then they cried to the Lord in their trouble. And he delivered them from their distress. He set forth, he sent forth his word and healed them. And saved them from the grave. Let them give thanks to the Lord for his mercy. And the wonders he does for his children. Let them offer a sacrifice of thanksgiving. And tell of his acts with shouts of joy. The town of Ephesus in modern-day Turkey was the largest city in the Roman Empire outside of Rome. The Christian community at Ephesus was established by Paul. He stayed there for over three years, then left Timothy in charge. He, or perhaps a disciple of his, writes this letter to them while Paul is imprisoned in Rome to remind them how God works through their lives. A reading from the book of Ephesians. You were dead through the trespasses and sins in which you once lived, following the course of the world, following the ruler of power and air, the spirit that is now at work among those who are disobedient. All of us once lived among them in the passions of our flesh, following the desires of flesh and senses, and we were by nature children of wrath, like everyone else. But God, who is rich in mercy, out of the great love with which he loved us, even when we were dead through our trespasses, made us alive together with Christ. By grace you have been saved and raised up with us, with him and seated it with him in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus, so that in the ages to come he might show the immeasurable riches of his grace in kindness toward us in Christ Jesus. For by the grace you have been saved through faith, and this is not your own doing. It is the gift of God, not a, the result of works, so that no one may boast. For we are what he has made us, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand to be our way of life. The word of the Lord. Lord, prepare me to be a sanctuary pure and holy, tried and true, with thanksgiving, I'll be a living sanctuary for you. The Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to John. Jesus said, Just as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whoever believes in him may have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, so that everyone who believes in him may not perish, but may have eternal life. Indeed, God did not send the Son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through him. Those who believe in him are not condemned, but those who do not believe are condemned already, because they have not believed in the name of the only Son of God. And this is the judgment 
that the light has come into the world and people loved darkness rather than light because their deeds were evil. For all who do evil hate the light and do not come to the light so that their deeds may not be exposed. But those who do what is true come to the light so that it may be clearly seen that their deeds have been done in God. The Gospel of the Lord. On a hot summer day in a small West Texas town, I was helping my mother tidy up the house. I just happened to glance across the room and I saw something really strange. As I walked closer, I realized that this strange object was a curled up rattlesnake. Of course, in horror, I ran out the door screaming, snake, snake, snake in the house. My father saved me because what he did is he lifted up that snake on a pole and carried it outside. So the opening words in our gospel today remind me of that snake, that snake my father lifted up on a pole. Now, I am terrified of snakes. I always have been. I always will be. Because as a kid, I was in constant alert for rattlesnakes as they thrive in West Texas. So much so that every year there's an annual rattlesnake roundup where they actually give prizes for the most pounds of snake caught, the longest snake, and they have a snake eating contest. Personally, I'm not interested. But if you are, it's not too late. Because today is the last day of this year's Roundup in Sweetwater, Texas. So check it out. It's for real, although really unusual. So and speaking of unusual, the opening sentence in our gospel is one of the most unusual in the Bible. Jesus says, Just as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whoever believes in him may have eternal life. Now, Jesus is referring to when the ancient Israelites in their temper tantrums and complaints about almost everything on their way to the promised land. And finally, God had had enough and punishes them by sending poison snakes into their camp, resulting in many deaths. So the people shout to Moses, Moses, pray to the Lord, take away these serpents from us. So Moses prays to the Lord, and what does God do? God does not offer a magical fix and take away these serpents. But rather, he instead sends another snake. God tells Moses to make a poisonous serpent, set it on a pole, and everyone bitten can be healed by looking at that snake. Now, it's important to note that their grumblings are not just about being unhappy. Their grumblings are not just about what is going on around them, but also about what is going on inside of them. Their stomachs may be empty, but their venom is in their hearts and their lives. They are in a real snaky place, and it's a place we all can recognize because we've all been there. I remember my parents saying, you better be careful. That one's going to come back to bite you. So God offers a solution, and it's strange. The serpent that bites and kills is also the serpent that heals and gives life. Now, on the surface, this seems so unbelievable. But what if the snaky places in our lives are not so much places to escape? but places where we can find healing. Often, it is in our suffering that we do find healing. And we're often led to God through those snaking places of our imperfections and grow spiritually much more by doing it wrong than by doing it right. So our faith is based on many such paradoxes. Paradoxes being the truth of opposites. For example, the last shall be first and the first shall be last, or the meek inherit the earth. Like other paradoxes of our faith, the snake that heals and kills flies in the face of common wisdom. It seems that the way of God is not an either this or that, 
Maybe it's more accurate to say it's this and that. We claim that we live by certain values or Christian principles, but we often do the very opposite. Or in the words of St. Paul in Romans, I do not what I want, but I do the very thing I hate. At times, we are all inconsistent. We are all a contradiction. Maybe Jesus is describing our life in Jesus' most familiar scripture in the Bible, John 3, 16. Are there times when you have believed and other times when you didn't or you weren't really sure what you believed? Are there times when you did the right thing and you knew it? Are other times when you did or said the wrong thing and you knew that too? I've been there, done that, and I bet you have too. We are all practicing on being fully human as reflected in the life of Jesus. Judgment is not from God, but from human beings who reject God in Christ. The gospel says, the light has come into the world and people love the darkness rather than the light. So instead of fearing a righteous and just God, we need to fear our own desires and choices to preserve the dark and hidden corners of our lives and in the world. Whatever those snaky places are in our lives today, every misstep, every sin, every wrong choice holds repentance as a way to healing. The gospel says there is hope in the midst of despair and forgiveness in the midst of sin. Reconciliation is the medicine that heals our broken relationships. Eternal life is found in the death of the Son of Man lifted up on a cross. And that means recognizing, acknowledging, and confessing our biting serpents, even as we look up to and believe in the Son of Man lifted on the cross. The medicine is already within us, within every one of us. The prescription was written in the beginning when God created us in his image and likeness. It was sealed by the Holy Spirit in baptism when we were marked as Christ's own forever. The medicine of Christ will never run out. On a hot summer day in a small town in West Texas, my earthly father, saved me from death by a poisonous snake bite. God, our Heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, brought God's kingdom to earth and saved you and me from those snaky places in our heart and soul. It's through Jesus, the light of the world, that we find the courage to look at those snaky places. During Lent, as, reflect on, as we reflect on the truth of opposites, the paradoxes that we are, when we find the peace that only God's love brings, the source of our healing and our forgiveness. So the question is not whether the medicine of Christ's eternal love is present and available. The question is, will we take it? Amen. Prayers of the people. Father, we pray for your holy Catholic Church. That we all may be one. Grant that every member of the church may truly and humbly serve you. That your name may be glorified by all people. For Michael, our presiding bishop. For Bonnie, our bishop. We pray for all bishops. For Paula, our priest in charge. And for all priests. And for Rhonda, our deacon that they may be faithful ministers of your word and sacraments. We pray for all who govern and hold authority in the nations of the world, that there may be justice and peace on the earth. For Rob and Bill, our wardens, for our vestry, for our intern, Caleb, and for all our volunteers, give us grace to do your will in all that we undertake that our works may find favor in your sight. Have compassion on those who suffer from any grief or trouble. Let us add our own prayers, silently or aloud.
and for those on our St. Michael prayer list, that they may be delivered from their distress. Give to the departed eternal rest. We pause to remember and name those dear to us, silently or aloud. Let us pray for all those who have died. Let light perpetual shine upon them. Let us thank God for the many blessings of this life, for those celebrating birthdays, anniversaries, and other joyous occasions. You may add your own prayers of thanksgiving silently or aloud. for all the ways we mark our joys. Let God be praised for giving us abundant life. We praise you for your saints who have entered into joy. May we also come to share in your heavenly kingdom. Almighty and eternal God, ruler of all things in heaven and earth, mercifully accept the prayers of your people and strengthen us to do your will through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. I'd like to add a prayer right now, marking one year of this pandemic life. It was written by a friend of mine, the Reverend Tracy Smith. Let us pray. God, you are with us all the time. All the time you are with us. Today we remember. We remember how things used to be. We remember how many things we've gone through. We remember things we missed and people we lost. Today we hope. We hope for healing. We hope for vaccines. We hope for wisdom. Today we share. We share smiles with one another. We share our joys and our sorrows. We share our dreams for the future. God, you are with us all the time. All the time you are with us. Be with us as we remember, hope, and share. Amen. Knowing that all things come of you, O oh God. Blessed are you, God of all creation. Through your goodness, we have the gifts of our life to share. Accept and use our offerings for your glory and for the service of your kingdom. Join with me now as we gather all of our prayers together, boldly praying as our Savior taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. And as we are prevented by health concerns from gathering around this table, we invite the Lord Jesus into our hearts in a spiritual way, praying in union, O Lord, with your faithful people at every altar of your church where the Holy Eucharist is now being celebrated. I desire to offer you praise and thanksgiving. I remember your death, Lord Jesus. I proclaim your resurrection. I await your coming in glory. Since I cannot receive you today in the sacrament of your body and blood, I beseech you to come spiritually into my heart. Cleanse and strengthen me with your grace, Lord Jesus, and never let me be separated from you. May I live in you and you in me in this life and in the life to come. Quick announcements. Here we are on week four of our, our weekly devotional. We're looking again at where our treasure is. There our hearts will be. And so we're questioning what might our response be, not to scarcity, but what would happen if you responded 
to great abundance. And so things to ponder this week. On Tuesday, our Zoom prayer will be focused on Letio Divina, <clears throat> just a fancy word for reading, holy reading. <clears throat> so I ask you to join me, if you will, 7 o'clock on Zoom this coming Tuesday as we experience a third form of prayer. Uh, and also, I want you to know that on the 20th of March, we are opening up our church as a vaccination site for our Hispanic neighbors here in Lincoln Park. And so there will be vaccines given on Saturday, March 20th, from 9 until 1 o'clock. And if you have not received a vaccination yet, please be in touch with me. I'm sure we can try to work something out since they will already be here at the church. Also on Saturday, March 20th, we will be uh, praying the stations in the street. And so let me invite you to come walk with us up and down 4th Street as we carry our cross and pray that devotional. Um, as long as the weather's good, if not, the rain day will be the next day, Sunday the 21st at noon. I hope you can join us, and if you can't, there is a, a meditative devotional of the Stations of the Cross that is on our YouTube channel. I invite you to use that as part of your prayer practice this Lent. As we close, let me bless you. Look down in mercy, Lord, on your people who stand before you, and grant that those whom you have nourished by your word and sacraments may bring forth fruit worthy of repentance through Christ our Lord. And may Almighty God bless, strengthen, and protect you in the name of God, creator, redeemer, and sanctifier. Amen. serve the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God.